Next on Worcester News tonight, a music teacher accused of raping a child faces a judge. The new details we are learning. Plus, dozens are marching 50 miles from Worcester to Springfield in an effort to help end gun violence. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Olivia Lemon. A longtime music teacher is now charged with four counts of rape of a child. The alleged crimes happened about nine years ago. The student was a fourth grader at the time. Today, Steve Jasek faced a judge. A former teacher appears in Worcester Superior Court Thursday. Steve Jasek taught music in Auburn for years. He is charged with four counts of rape of a child. Not Prosecutors say the alleged crimes took place nine years ago at the former Julia Bancroft School. The 62 year old is retired but still teaches private music lessons. These assaults would take place during school hours and on school property. Jasek has been married for 20 years and has a 14 year old son. Prosecutors say he is facing the potential of spending the rest of his life in prison, but his lawyer says he has no criminal record. He's shocked and confused by these allegations. Um, he denies that any and all of them occurred. Jasek posted his $5,000 cash bail, and while he didn't speak to reporters after court, his lawyer did say this. Uh, he looks forward to having his, his day in court, and uh, that's all I'm going to say. Now, Jasek is on a GPS tracking device in order to stay away from anyone under the age of 14 other than his own child. He is due back in court September 24th. Dozens of people took off this morning to march 50 miles from Worcester to Springfield. 50 miles more is part of a push to end gun violence following February's high school shooting in Florida. Our Roslyn Flaherty joins us now with the story. Roslyn. Olivia, they are marching to a gun manufacturing company asking asking for them to be held accountable and responsible for producing guns banned in Massachusetts. 50 miles more. 50 miles more, us more. Chanting on the streets of Worcester, dozens of Massachusetts residents march to protest gun violence. We are not asking to take away anybody's rights at all. We are asking for common sense solutions that allows people to practice their Second Amendment rights and respects the right to live. David Hogg is joining the march. He is a survivor of the February school shooting in Parkland, Florida, where 17 people were killed. This is not about just my school. This is not just about mass shootings. This is about everyday gun violence across the country. The local students will be marching 50 miles to Smith & Wesson headquarters in Springfield. There, they will call on the nation's third largest gun manufacturer to stop producing guns banned in Massachusetts. The fact that we're having to stand up in a state that has some of the strictest gun laws in the country but manufactures guns that are technically illegal here is ridiculous. The group will also be asking the company to make a $5 million annual donation towards researching gun violence. Organizers say they are not asking the company to move away. They are asking them to be accountable and responsible for their actions. They know of our demands, they know of our presence, they know we're doing this. They haven't responded, but trust me, things are going to get done. This is what democracy looks like. 50 miles more Massachusetts says this march is powerful and they know it will bring change. It shows me that this movement is still going on and it's still going strong and I'm just further, further convinced that change will happen and come November 6th, there will be an extreme shakeup. Now it will, it will take them four days to march to Springfield. We reached out to Smith & Wesson for comment but have not heard back. Rosalind Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. City Manager Ed Augustus says attention from the Paw Sox has more developers looking at Worcester. He says the City and Chamber of Commerce have gotten a number of calls from companies who've never operated in the city and are now looking at land. Augustus is also addressing the Worcester Bravehearts concerns from Tuesday's City Council meeting. General Manager Dave Peterson said he was troubled with the process and believed the Bravehearts should have had a seat at the table. Meanwhile, Augustus says the Bravehearts have always been a part of the conversation. I think if people ask the Brave Hearts, I spoke with uh, John Creedon and them 25 times, if not more, uh, throughout this entire process. I sat in rooms with them and the Paw Sox management uh, trying to come up with a, a deal at work. So uh, the Brave Hearts have always been on everybody's mind. 
Augustus also says as someone who was born and raised in Worcester, he's never experienced this degree of civic pride from the community. Worcester's Kelly Square is set to be rebuilt as part of the city's Pawtucket Red Sox plan. The intersection has become infamous with Mass DOT listing it as the most dangerous in the state in a report last month. Nearly 300 accidents took place between 2013 and 2015, but for some, Kelly Square has become one of the city's signature features, leaving some with mixed feelings after hearing news of the change. A real part of Worcester. This test your driving skills and your temper. <laughs> I don't know. I'm so used to having it like this. I, I think anything new in the city is great. So we don't know until it comes. So why not? Let's go for it. Let's bring it. And Mass DOT says they are still in the early stages of development and analysis on the project. There is no set time for when the blueprint of the redesign will be revealed. City leaders say Worcester is experiencing major momentum this past week with the announcement of the Paw Sox and Canal District Redevelopment Plan, but the growth doesn't end there. Today, the Massachusetts Port Authority confirming big news for the Worcester Regional Airport. Our Brittany Schaefer spoke with them today. She has the details. Brittany. Olivia Massport Board Chairman Lou Evangelitis confirms a third major national airline is coming to ORH and with it will come a new destination. A third major airline is coming to Worcester Regional Airport and it's offering a new destination. It's a player that's a national airline. Uh, people are going to be excited when they hear about the uh, destination that's going to be in play and that will also be a destination that will allow uh, connecting flights probably uh, all over the United States. The announcement expected Tuesday will be the second from a commercial carrier adding service this year. Massport Board Chairman Lou Evangelitis says the momentum of the Worcester Airport is growing. We have the initial flights with JetBlue and the commitment and then the, the flights to New York and the connecting flights out of New York, but then to get the American flights coming now, starting very shortly to Philadelphia. So it's gonna be another great step forward for us as a region and for the airport specifically. The Worcester Regional Chamber of Commerce says another airline and destination will only open the doors for Worcester economically. The more people we bring in and out of here, the more they're gonna be spending money. I think it just further enhances the city and the region in terms of its connectivity to places around the country and around the globe. Chamber President Tim Murray says the airport's convenience and now added flight options will be a no-brainer for local residents. Tolls cost money, parking costs money, and people in central Massachusetts uh, and beyond can uh, you know, conveniently and affordably get to Worcester Regional Airport and still get to any place they want to around the globe now. Evangelitis couldn't reveal the exact airline or destination, but says it's significant. I just think this is just a continuation of that positive momentum. We all feel it. If you've been around Worcester long enough, you know this is for real, this is different, and uh, we're well on our way to something real special, and I think this is just another step in that in big picture. Again, the official announcement of which airline and destination will be held at the airport on Tuesday at 9 a.m. Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. In an effort to increase recycling, more than $2.5 million is distributed to almost 250 municipalities across the state. State leaders are trying to increase recycling while also educating people on what can and cannot be recycled. The $2.6 million grant will be used for funding for programs to help reduce waste and maximize a Recycle Smart initiative launched this week by the Department of Environmental Protection. It's something administrators have said the Worcester Public School District needs for years. The current Self High Community School is 40 years old and has had several issues over the past few. Today, the city broke ground on a new school. Our Chandler Walsh joins us live with more. Chandler. Olivia, the city says the year 2021 is a year to celebrate in Worcester. Not only is it when the Worcester Red Sox arrive, but it's also when the new South High is built. For the Worcester Public Schools superintendent, the school is like home. Construction begins on the new South High Community School. It's somewhat bittersweet for Worcester Public Schools Superintendent Maureen Benenda, who started teaching here when the school opened in 1978. She also spent years as its principal. I have uh, vivid, wonderful memories of thousands of children, you know, that really attended this school and are still in our community. The city broke ground for the new South High Thursday. Two, three. 
Benenda says after realizing there was a great need. We just need to offer our students many more opportunities and, you know, updated technologies. Mayor Joseph Petty says the school will be state of the art with turf fields, a media center, performance areas and science labs. It will also add vocational opportunities like culinary arts, early childhood and diesel mechanics for students. This is going to be a wonderful school that's built. It's a project Petty has spent years pushing for. This new school represents an investment in our future of the Whistler Public Schools, over $200 million alone. The budget for the new school costs about $209 million. The Massachusetts School Building Authority is investing $112 million into the project. We're able to partner with every single city in town, and Worcester actually gets our highest reimbursement rate of 80%. The school will be built behind the current South High and will be complete for the 2021 school year. Benenda says it's a large part of the district's improvements. People should really look at the Worcester Public Schools and say, well, I really want my child to go there. Doherty High is also scheduled to be redone. Benenda says they are now deciding on site options and both high schools will hold more than 1,400 students. Chandler Walsh, Worcester News Tonight. Worcester's NAACP holding a meet and greet Wednesday with candidate for Worcester County District Attorney Blake Rubin. Rubin is running against incumbent Joseph Early Jr. He told the crowd he has more than 22 years of experience as an attorney, 16 years as a prosecutor, and is currently a defense attorney. He says he has prosecuted murderers, violent crimes, and robberies. Rubin says his vision is to focus the DA's office on the most serious crimes impacting Worcester County. Because I've always focused the office on violent career criminals, crimes that affect the safety of the public. And that's what I want to see the DA's focus on, rather than locking up people charged with minor crimes or people that are battling with addiction or people that are battling with mental illness. And Rubin is encouraging everyone to vote. He is running as an independent in the general election and says he doesn't believe politics have any place in the justice system.